edition, Oregon Battle of the Books 2022-23, grades 3rd through 5th. My name's Sheila, and I'm so glad you joined me today. The Oregon Battle of the Books, or OBOB, is a competition for students around the state of Oregon that get together and compete by reading eight books, I'm sorry, 16 books, and answer questions and compete. And it's a fun and great competition. You do not have to be in a team or in the competition to enjoy any of the books I will be talking about today. Today I will be sharing eight of the 16 books and then next month I will share the second eight books. So let's get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is called The Best of Iggy by Ann Barrows. And if you're familiar with Ann Barrows, she wrote Ivy and Bean, you will not be disappointed. Iggy is hilarious. His motto is it seemed like a good idea at the time. He's not a bad kid. He really isn't a bad kid. Okay, so he does get in trouble and he does do bad things and he's really not very sorry about it. But people make a big deal out of everything. Nothing got broken, nobody got hurt. What's the big deal? Except this one time, somebody did get hurt and he calls it the best idea ever turned into the worst idea ever. Iggy is sorry he did it. And he really, really, really is sorry. What did he do, you ask? You gotta read it to find out. Kinda Like Brothers by Co Booth is a story about a boy named Jarrett whose mother fosters babies in their house. Everything is great and he loves it, except for this one time his mother fosters a baby that has an older brother. And Jared's not so sure about it. Everyone thinks they're gonna be best friends and play sports and have a, such a great time and be like brothers. But Jared's not too sure. He finds that Kavan is hiding something and he's just not sure that he's trustworthy enough. But can they become like friends or become like brothers? They'll have to find a way to figure it out. The Dragon with a Chocolate Heart by Stephanie Burgess. Oh, this is a fun fantasy. It's about a dragon named Alver Turin who wants nothing but to explore the world around her but her family thinks that she's too young to go out on her own and must stay in the cave for several more years. But Avertine does not like that and she's going to go out and prove it to them that she is brave and she is strong and she's ready. And the only way that she can think of doing that is by capturing the most fiercest of their prey, a human. Well, Avertine captures this human and the human tricks her into drinking an enchanted cup of hot chocolate. And then Avertorine is turned into a little human being. Well, she doesn't have any fire breathing skills. She doesn't have any claws. She's not fierce anymore. Or is she? She's now addicted to chocolate and must find an ap apprentice who can house her in their chocolate house. And then maybe she can conquer new territory. Or won't she? Me, Frida, and the Secret of the Peacock Ring by Angela Cervantes. Paloma travels to Mexico to find memories of her father. She is hoping that spending time in Mexico will help her unlock memories of the time they had together briefly and maybe much more about her father. So when Paloma gets to Mexico and meets two siblings, Lizzie and Gael, who share an irresistible challenge with Paloma, and that challenge is to find the peacock ring that once belonged to the artist Frida Kalu. Finding the ring will mean giving back a beautiful history to the city of Mexico, but also 
maybe honor her father's name because her father loved Frida Kahlo. Well, the siblings might not want this fun reward of bringing back the ring to Mexico, Mexico City. They might have something else up their sleeve and Paloma's just not sure. Letters from Cuba by Ruth Behar. This is the story of a young girl, Jewish girl named Esther, who in 1938 escapes Poland with her father in hopes to go to Cuba to find freedom, to find a home, and to be able to bring the rest of the family over. Now, Esther is devastated to have to be separated from her sister and other family members. So she promises her sister that she will write down everything that happens until they are reunited. And she does, recording both the good and the kindness of the Cuban people and her discovery of valuable hidden talents and the bad, of course. The fact that Nazism has found its foothold even in Cuba. This story is told in letter format to her sister. So all of the, all of the story is in letter format. And it's kind of, it is based on Ruth Behar's story, family history. So this is a fun one. Ten by Shawamini Flint. Ten-year-old Maya lives for soccer, but no one in her small seaside town in Malaysia shares her obsession. Her brother prefers hockey. The girls at school thinks it's a boy's game. And her grandmother just wants her to be a good Indian girl. And Maya has other problems too. Her parents are fighting all the time. It's getting worse and worse and everyone is getting in trouble. And worst of all, Brazil has just lost the World Cup. But Maya is determined to become a professional soccer player. The only problem is she's never kicked a soccer ball. Hmm. Spark by Sarah Beth Durst is another fun fantasy about storm beasts and their guardians. So the storm beasts and their guardians create perfect weather every day in their country. And Mina longs for a storm beast of her own. But when she bonds with a lightning beast, a creature of fire and chaos, everyone's certain it's a mistake. Everyone but Mina and her beast picks it. So quickly, Mina is enrolled in guardian school, but she struggles to master her skills. And then she discovers her country's weather comes at a devastating cost. A cost powerful enough that people want to hide it. Mina's never been the type to speak out or say anything, but someone has to tell the truth. And with Pixit and Pixit's help, she resolves to find a way to be heard. The last book I'm going to speak about today is called Shirley and Hamilla Save Their Summer by Jillian Gertz. Well, Hamilla is staring down a lonely summer in a new neighborhood until she meets Shirley. And Shirley's a little strange, but both girls need a new plan for the summer and they might as well become friends. Then this kid Oliver shows up begging for Shirley's help. His pet gecko has disappeared and he's sure it was stolen. That's when Hamilla discovers Shirley's secret. She's the neighborhood's best kid detective ever, and she's on the case. When Hamilla discovers that she's got some detective skills of her own, a crime-solving partnership is born. The mystery of the missing gecko turns Shirley and Hamilla's summer upside down. And when their partnership hits a rough patch, they have to work together to solve the greatest mystery of all, what it means to be a friend. And this is a graphic novel and it is just fun and great. So thanks for joining me today and hearing about those eight Oba books and I hope to see you next month. Bye-bye.